If you love watching the running back position, or if you have been a running back in your past, then I hope you enjoy watching Javante Williams run the ball as much as I do. He's the rookie running back in Denver who I guess is the backup, but he splits reps pretty equally with Melvin Gordon. I don't want even that much buildup before we get into this film analysis, but after watching a lot of film and multiple interviews with this guy, he has quickly become one of my favorite players in the entire NFL. And after you watch this whole thing, I think he will be one of yours too. And to me, if I'm a high level veteran quarterback this offseason, i.e. Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, or any others that decide they want to leave Denver's defense and weapons at wide receiver, but especially this kid is a great selling point for them to join the Broncos. I'm going to show you exactly why. Because the Broncos have just looked to be an elite quarterback away this entire season. There's a lot of clips to cover, so let's get right into it. So if I asked you who you thought had the most broken tackles in the entire NFL, maybe you would say Jonathan Taylor or Nick Chubb or Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones or any one of these players. But what if I told you it was Javante Williams and it's not even close? And we're getting into that in a little bit, but I want to break down some plays to show you exactly why. Watch this play. Javante Williams is going to get the ball. And against the Ravens, he's going to get it. He's going to be running up, trying to find a hole. Really nothing there. He's going to get contact at the line of scrimmage. Just kind of pinball right off him, spin off of him. That's really impressive. Makes a really nice cut right here on this corner. Makes it up. Again, two people. And he's just going to pinball right on it. I mean, you just look who wants it more on this play. Marlon Humphrey. I want you to see where Marlon Humphrey makes contact with Javante Williams and where they go. He's going to keep driving his legs, keep pushing, keep driving. There's five yards there's 10 yards I mean just who wants it more and he runs the ball like he owes it to the game of the NFL to get every single yard available he just carried Marlon Humphrey for 22 yards and if we watch this full speed it is incredible and this is every single play I mean it doesn't matter I'm gonna show you a lot of plays we're gonna go over four clips and then a few other things but it doesn't matter the context of the play I'm not gonna tell you if it's third and long or third and short or if they're up if they're down it is every single it's all across the board it's he runs like he owes it to the game and it's so addicting to watch now on this play against the Cowboys, he's going to have another great run. He's going to find the hole. I know what you're thinking, probably the last play. Okay, that was Marlon Humphrey. He's a corner. He's a lot bigger than him. But how about this? How does this work for you? Antoine Woods, 6'1", 318 pounds, number 99 right now that he's wrapped up with. He's going to take him for a ride for 10 yards. But not only that, he's going to keep his legs going, keep moving, and actually break this tackle and break it for another 15 yards for a 40-yard run. And he's not one of these crazy, explosive, freak athletes this is all built off of hard work and effort he runs a four five seven he's not the most explosive guy but in the, he's a weight room warrior and he's just gonna want it more he squats 600 pounds and that just screams that he is going to grind to get better at his craft just because he wants it more and now I hope you're beginning to see why he leads the NFL in broken tackles, even though he only has the 15 most carries. And this isn't even a broken tackle, but like I said, it's like he owes it to the game. He's not going to go down. And once he's down, he's just always frustrated. Like whenever he gets up, he's like mad that he didn't do more for his team, that he didn't. And this kind of stuff is contagious, I promise you. This team... I mean, look how these linemen react. He finds a hole. There really isn't anything there. This is where running backs kind of put their head down, brace contact, and fall forward for a few yards. Not Javante Williams. He's going to keep his legs driving. Even though there's three, four people on him right now, his lineman's going to be pulling him. And look how exciting this is. I mean, what do you do? This is a first, this converts a first down. I mean, this had no business being a first down, but he picks up an extra 10 yards to get the first down on the play. The lineman's hype. Teddy Bridgewater's all the way over there. He is a step. This is contagious. This is great for an NFL team. And if I'm a veteran quarterback, I want this guy on my team to be the spark plug. But another reason is what I'm going to show you in the next part of this film analysis that is another great part of his game. And another reason why I think Javante Williams is so underrated and why an NFL quarterback would really want him on his team is the same reason why I think a lot of wide receivers are underrated or why someone like Zeke Elliott is very underrated in this regards, why wide receivers when they're very good at run blocking or running backs when they're really good at pass blocking. This is Jermaine Pratt, number 57. Uh, he's in the middle linebacker, and he's going to come on this blitz scot-free. This is Javante Williams, and he's going to pick him up. And this is a super underrated part of the running back position that I don't think gets talked about about enough. 
but just picture this. You don't think Aaron Rodgers or Russell Wilson wouldn't want what, like the center? I mean, I know he's sliding. Javante Williams has to pick up the blitz, whether this is a miscommunication or what. I, I don't think so, but I think this is Javante Williams' guy. Look how he just throws his body and just bangs in Jermaine Pat. This is a middle linebacker. Teddy Bridgewater has the confidence that he's not even looking. This is a guy coming in scot-free, and he's looking downfield. That is a luxury that not every quarterback has. And as I watched a ton of film, this is not the same luxury he has when Melvin Gordon's in the game. Javante Williams is going to throw his body in there and just bang him back and let Teddy Bridgewater get off this throw. It's going to be incomplete, and actually all three of the examples I'm going to show are incomplete, but that's the example of why they need a veteran quarterback and why I think the Denver Broncos can be so good next year. And this play unfortunately ends up being a sack, but I'll tell you who did do their job. So this is how it's going to go. We have a one-on-one -on -one right here. And between these three linemen, they're going to take care of these two guys. And then we have a one-on-one -on -one matchup right here with the left tackle on the edge rusher, leaving linebacker Patrick Queen coming scot-free. Javante Williams is over here. He knows his assignment. He's going to scrape through, see where he needs help. And just watch because not everyone does their job, but watch Javante Williams because he for sure does his job. So he's he knows his assignment assignment right away he knows the blocking assignment which isn't always the case with rookie running backs and yes he is a rookie which is just so impressive look at Patrick Queen just throws him to the side and unfortunately this is going to be a sack but look at Patrick Queen that is Javante Williams doing his job and that is huge and why he is so 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 underrated and we're going to look at one more example of this and unlike the last play where not everyone was accounted for and someone was coming in scot-free, everyone is accounted for on this play. So Javante Williams, he doesn't have a route on this play, so he's just going to block. But what he's going to do is he's going to scrape all the way through, see who needs help on this play. It's going to be end up being the right tackle, which, I don't know, maybe that's their weak link right now because he's like let up a few sacks I was when I was watching in film. But he just does a great job. He's like, all right, who needs help? Who do I need help? Scrape. All right, everything looks good up the middle. Everything good. He turns around, looks like his right tackle got beat so he's gonna go up there bang let's drew lock get out and just gives him enough time just you know you don't need to lay everyone out on this play i mean these are big dudes but just bang that's gonna be a sack on this play if javante williams isn't there doesn't know his assignment let's drew lock get off this throw it is a terrible throw this is why russell wilson or aaron Rodgers needs to be on the broncos it's gonna be incomplete but that play doesn't even happen if it isn't for javante williams and like I said, he's not even a starter on this team. And like we're going to go over some stats in a little bit. And I'm going to tell you why I don't mind that so much because I really do. And that's the 36-inch vertical. That's just him wanting a few extra yards on this play. And I think on this play, look how he just goes after contact. He's not avoiding it. He's actually mad on this play that he didn't get to run him over. He just wants contact every single play. On this play, we're going to see Micah Parsons. Or not that this play, sorry. This is going to be the next one. But he's just dragging people along. But I'm going to show you why I don't mind him getting these split reps. This is where Micah Parsons, one of the most sure tacklers in the entire NFL, if I showed you my last video on Micah Parsons, that is, he is one of the most sure tacklers and he just breaks tackles from him as well. And I'm going to show you why I like that he's keeping his legs fresh. He's not taking too many hits. He has a little wiggle in him. Like I said, he runs a 4-5-7, not going to be the most explosive guy, but he can get the job done. He's not going to outrun corners or safeties and even some defensive linemen, but he sure is going to give you 100% effort on every single play. And now we're just going to quickly, very quickly, I promise, go over some stats comparing Melvin Gordon to Javante Williams. And on, on the NFL list, I've ranked this on how many attempts they got. And as you can see, Melvin Gordon's 13, Javante Williams is 15. So the Broncos do run the ball a healthy amount, and they do do it very evenly. And like I said, Melvin Gordon started 14 games. Javante Williams only started one when he was hurt. But the, the attempts are very, very equal. But Javante Williams has a lot more yards than... Melvin Gordon does. He has more first downs. He has less yards before contact. So it's not like the line is just magically blocking better for Javante Williams. It's not the case at all. Yards after contact, it's not even close. Javante Williams is killing him. And the next one we're going to look at is broken tackles per attempt. There's another stat he leads the league in. Every 5.7 runs, he has a broken tackle. He has 31 broken tackles on the year. And I think next on the list is Jonathan Taylor with 22. And John Jonathan Taylor has way more carries than Javante Williams, and so you just see his kind of impact when he gets the ball. He's not the speed demon. He does squat a lot of weight, and this is why he has quickly, quickly, quickly become my favorite player in the NFL. 
So that's my case why Javante Williams is one of the most underrated running backs in the entire NFL and one of the most underrated rookies in the entire NFL. And he has quickly become one of my favorite players in the entire league. He just screams hard work and he just wants it more than seemingly everyone else with not all the athletic ability that everyone else has, like the speed, but he just wants it more. And so I have a few questions for you guys. Who should the Broncos target this offseason for the quarterback position? What do you guys think of Javante Williams after watching this video? and who should I cover next? And if you like videos like these, make sure to leave a like and comment down below what you think of the video or what you think about Javante Williams, and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you so much for checking out the channel. I really do appreciate everyone's support, and as always, I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace!